Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, having me. And uh, I'm glad you guys chose to join the uh, session. And uh, uh, excellent welcome to WordCamp Asia and the organizers for having me. And this has been uh, like uh, one of the best WordCamps uh, I ever joined. So uh, thank you for joining WordCamp Asia. And, uh, and uh, from myself, uh, excellent hello to you all. And uh, I'm glad that you have all chosen to join. So uh, as you have maybe seen uh, that I am saying hello in a lot of different fonts, so you have maybe guessed my topic today is the secret life of fonts. So let's jump right in. So I'm Saif Hassan. I'm working as the lead product manager at VDevs. We work with WordPress and SaaS and stuff. So uh, before jumping into uh, Pro, uh, fonts, typography, web designing, and things like that. I want to uh, take a short tour to like why uh, I care about uh, typography or human-centered designs or things like that. So uh, to go there, I need to ask a question, uh, what is ACI? So ACI is like a combination of three things, the most uh, Number one thing is computer science, and the second one is cognitive psychology, and the third one is fine arts and design. So basically, when a developer is developing a software, he doesn't mind to like check with the uh, cognitive, cognitive function or the psychology part of it, and uh, the, how the user is going to use it or things like that. But when we combine these three aspects of uh, computer science and design and psychology, we come with the topic human-computer interaction, so these three things. So uh, it basically opens up the portal to human-centered designs. And there are a lot of things in human-centered designs like color psychology, mental model, UX laws, reviews, usability, and things like that, a lot more. But today, I'm going to talk about uh, typography. And uh, it's a really nice and, uh, what can I say, uh, interesting topic. Uh, uh, don't get bored. I, I, I'll try to make sure you don't get bored, because uh, uh, there will be some fun stuff you'll see. So uh, before going into the topic, uh, this guy is Don Norman. So he's very popular uh, because he pioneered the uh, human-centered design principles in, back in the 80s. He worked at uh, famous companies like Apple and HP, and he basically uh, wrote a book called The Design of Everyday Things, and he gave us six design principles that has like, stood the test of time. The book was published in like the 80s, and still is being referenced in uh, many aspects of uh, both digital and physical products. So this, uh, he basically gave us five, uh, six uh, guidelines while making digital or physical products which are affordance, feedback, visibility, constraints, consistency, and mapping. So these are all uh, like uh, elaborative topics, but we can't uh, like explain this stuff because I have already a uh, talk there. If you want to check it out, the link is there. You can uh, take a picture of it and check it out later, but no problem, uh, we can uh, skip ahead. So uh, in many cases, typography is the evolution of ACI and is a subpart of ACI. And before going into like how to design good typography or how's the background and how typography came to uh, this uh, age, I want to look you some bad typography designs. So if you want to take a look at this uh, image, you can uh, say what the first number is, number two, or number nine? What do you think? Two. OK, so a lot of people think two, but when I first saw it, I thought this was like nine. So uh, the typography is like confusing me. And then this actually says, I love you, but this is your brain processing it and saying, I love you. But if you kind of read it, it says something like, I lay you. So the type, another typography fail right there. And uh, this is uh, like a 
<laughs> so this is like the, when you go to the movies, the movies gets to send to the uh, premium uh, Oscars or something like that, and when you put leaves around it, it looks really cool and official and give you a nice vibe. But if you put Comic Sans MS right there, it doesn't quite like work out, and you see that the design is falling apart. So as we are changing fonts and things around it, you think you, you say that things are changing. So this is the Declaration of Independence in a nice font and looks cool and looks official. And this is the same thing in Comic Sans MS. And you know it's, it, it's not working right now. It's falling apart. And you know that this is, uh, this is not a, like, this is a replica or a fake thing. So as we are changing fonts, these fonts are speaking back to us. So uh, this is another fail uh, typography. The poster was probably saying, don't drive safely, or do drive safely, or I, I can only read, do die safely, maybe. So <laughs> there are a lot of uh, typography fails right there. So uh, um, covered some typography fails. I hope you had fun. And, uh, if, uh, if you are going to look at uh, the evolution of typography, back in the 1500s, we see the letters were something around handwritten. Because at that time, that when typography was developing for modern computer and uh, printing press, so uh, the first fonts were copied from the churches who uh, like, uh, written, gave written documents over uh, so then we had like human style, Cajun style, and some other styles. So this is like a quick recap where we were and where are we going. And uh, as I have shown the bad typographies, you may have laughed, you may have chuckled, you may have, yes, yeah, you may have some other, info, uh, other emotions. So the typography is actually playing with your emotions. When you see a font or you see a text, it's basically uh, hitting your brain with different type of emotions, trust, mood, memories, personality, and even taste. I will show you how taste getting uh, changes with uh, good typography or bad typography. And uh, so this is an example of the uh, typography, read me Blade Runner. So this looks really cool, right? Like a science fiction movie. But if I change the same thing to a different font, it looks like a Western movie. So same thing, I'm trying with a different font. It looks really cool, futuristic, maybe a science fiction movie. But I'm changing it to a different font. It looks like a movie in the 60s, maybe a Western movie. Same time, uh, maybe this is a... Uh, this is a for kids, this movie poster might be for kids because uh, this has like cute emotions speaking through the typography. And then uh, we can understand that fonts turns words into stories. For example, I'm a big fan of this TV series, Stranger Things. You can, uh, when you look at the poster, this has this weird, uh, this has this uh, really good and cool Stephen Hawking's vibe of the 80s. By looking at the poster, you know that this, uh, this movie poster or this series might be set in the 80s and have some 80s background. But if I put the same thing, you know, like a modern uh, design, and it looks like really cool science fiction type of thing that may be set in the 2500s. So uh, as we are changing and uh, designing with typography, it it's uh, playing with your mind, playing with your emotions, and other things. So uh, then, fonts alter the meaning of words. Uh, this is a, like a really nice example. <laughs> so I will always find you. The left one is like a cute romantic vibes, giving a romantic vibes, and the right one may be a psycho killer who is trying to kill you. And uh, then, fonts make others to spend more. So I want to take you, uh, I, want to, uh, I want you to take a look at this picture and maybe guess which of this restaurant, ex imagine these are the restaurant titles. 
and uh, maybe some people ex spend more on, uh, on a different typography and some people spend less on a different typography. So look at the uh, bottom right one. So this one, so research found out a restaurant like this, designed like this, is going to attract more premium customers, which are going to spend way a lot more because the restaurant has kind of this kind of typography, this type of font. So then, uh, this uh, word typography like uh, blends into our culture and it becomes a study of signs and meanings and it kind of, we call it semiotics. So semiotics is the thing that you know by looking at this movie poster, if you're going to see a movie and this poster comes up in the beginning, you know this is a comedy movie. This is not going to be a, like a thriller movie. And this might be an action movie, maybe directed by uh, something like a good action director. So, so the semiotics is the stereotypes that the comedy movies usually have the first one and the romantic comedies in the second one. And any movie might be the last one which one there is. So comedy films most use uses uh, sans serif fonts like a Gil Sans, and romantic films use Dido. So this is a, like a quite a good example. The left one, the comedy movie, using the semiotics, the Gil Sans. The middle one, quite a nice movie. It's also using a D-dot. And the last one is, uh, up for your guess, one of the most popular movie posters in the world. So this movie poster font, the right one, kind of like take over the whole movie poster industry for the 10, 20 years of the last decade. So this, uh, this poster has, like, uh, uh, ha has been like printed on uh, albums and uh, movie posters, thousands of movie posters and different genres like uh, sports, actions, adventure, and things like that. So uh, this poster is, you can make anything epic by using this font, actually. If you write, like, I am OK, and you, you kind of like have this font with a nice design, it, it looks, it feels grand. It feels like you are going on an adventure. It has action and things like that. So uh, this uh, font is known as Trazan, and Trazan has been uh, one of the most popular typefaces from the movie industry. And even the Oscars in 2006 uh, chose this font to like show their title cards and things like that. So uh, as you have probably imagined, the fonts influence you whether you want it or not. So uh, many, in many ways, fonts uh, has this subconscious impact on you. So whichever font you choose to like design your web and things like that has a profound influence on you. So this is a research by Dr. David Lewis, and he says that fonts communicating directly to your subconscious. And this has been proved by research. You can Google it up later on. And this is a nice example of how an elegant font makes you taste the soup better. For example, this is a menu which has this creamy tomato soup in Courier new font, whenever you are programming, you maybe see this type of fonts. And some users were given, for a, for a research purpose, like 50 users were given this menu with a, with a programming font. And some users were given this font, uh, this menu with a cool light, little touches uh, Lucida font. So, so the test was quite Wonderful, because two-thirds of the people thought this soup tasted way better than the previous one, but they were, they were served the same soup, actually. So uh, Times New Roman is probably one of, the, one of our most popular classic fonts. We have been using it for a lot of our documents. But uh, you may have known that Times News, News Roman was uh, purposefully built because uh, it, the newspaper has like really narrow columns to fit more words into narrow columns. 
So, uh, but we are, we are using it uh, right now on all of our things. And there is a quite a nice example of it. So, so can a typeface make you appear more intelligent? So a research found out a student, the student was like a really genius, I think. So he tried three uh, fonts to submit his essays and assignments. And after uh, like comparing them, he found out uh, he got an average of A when he, when he submitted the papers with Georgia, and A, an A minus when he submitted with Times New Roman, and Trebuchet when he submitted in, uh, got an average of B minus. So maybe the, he had some other uh, studies and things like that, but we can uh, clearly understand that sometimes fonts has a bigger impact on you whether you want it or not, because the teacher might have even noticed. He, he maybe didn't even care what font this was, but the student who tried to like uh, manipulate him got a good score because he used a nice font. Got, uh, got bad score on other stuff as well. So uh, there are some iconic fonts uh, throughout history, like the NASA one is very popular and is printed everywhere in the globe and the Coca-Cola one, which hasn't been changed for like last 300 years. Uh, so back in the 1969, when NASA thought about uh, like repurposing their design, so this design was uh, not, uh, not their first design. So NASA had their uh, first logo, which was not really hip and cool. So then NASA thought about in 1969 that they need to like revamp to speak to the younger audience. And then they uh, took the years, eight years required, and they did a full manual revamp. So back in the days when there was a documentation or manual for space astronauts, so they had like a manual, like a really text-based manual. But when they uh, did the re redesign and rethought of everything from scratch, they replaced tutorials with cute pictures and step-by-step -step fonts. So uh, this thing spoke to astronauts a lot better and the general audience than it was like a lot of text. And then this font, which is like really popular everywhere, even if you may have seen uh, roaming around Thailand, that this uh, very bold typeface, and which can be seen by a lot of uh, different uh, uh, restaurants and customers as well. So this has been this has this font has been used in the Beatles flame as well, and this font is known as the Cooper Black. So this is this was Oswald Cooper designed by him, and this is the most far-sighted, uh, most far-sighted, bold font they could imagine at that time. For example, this is the most bold typeface that they could design at that time. Uh, and it was an instant hit all over the world. So Europe, America, Asia, everywhere people used to use uh, Cooper Black, and maybe uh, you, if you find room around, you'll see this font uh, there as well. Because uh, this font, like really the most fattest and widest font they could imagine, they could design, and it, uh, it has a, like, a really good legibility as well. So that's Cooper Black, and this type of information is uh, provided, uh, got this uh, info from Vox Media, so thanks to them. A quick shout out. And uh, there is a, a personality of things that whichever fonts you use uh, have uh, give different personality to, your, to you and your documents and your uh, whatever you do, your website and things like that. For example, this is like a really cool personality thing, like uh, three fonts walk into a bar, but barman turns to Comic Sense and says, sorry, we don't serve in your type here, because Comic Sense is, is a whole uh, different, is on a whole different league on its own. So uh, you may see this font when you may be working uh, or wanting to go to a Chinese restaurant, maybe here in Thailand. But we can read it, right? Take away. But this is not really Chinese. This is actually uh, English imitating Chinese. So uh, 
to resonate with audience all over the world. So the history is quite nice. So when uh, people, uh, Chinese people, bought Chinese restaurants to America, so they had a like problem with differentiating how to place the restaurants in a distinctive category. So you, the audience always knows this is a Chinese restaurant. But problem is your audience doesn't know Chinese. You can't write Chinese in the board. So they invent the, this, this font was invented by an American. So he invented this font to like imitate the Chinese culture. So whenever you see this type of font, you immediately know that this is a Chinese restaurant. For example, you may be, uh, if you roam around the city and the, you uh, go to the Chinatown, you will see many restaurants using this type of fonts to sell maybe uh, Thai cuisine or Chinese cuisine because it, uh, by choosing English, they are speaking a lot more wider audience than if they used uh, Chinese only. So uh, there is uh, this cultural uh, relevance that uh, these fake English fonts create. For example, this font is actually named the Chop Sui font. And uh, there are some other examples of this, like this is a generic Indian restaurant. So for Chinese, they use this one. For Indian, they use this one. But if you think about altering that, if you try to sell an Indian restaurant with this type font, I think it won't work out. And people will have a lot of tough time to like process this. This is an in Indian restaurant. So these fake fonts are like trying to speak to you to your cognitive balance that this is uh, a certain kind of information that has been buried into you by different semiotics over the years. So if you may have noticed that uh, Matt talked about that there is a website revamped recently on WordPress.org. So they're using a new typography here, and it looks really cool, modern, and they're revamping everything. And uh, designing for the web with nicer typography is always a challenge, but not something you shouldn't do, because uh, you should always uh, choose nicer fonts that your audience wants. and maybe have the best, uh, best uh, fonts to connect with them. So this is the new, uh, new font that WordPress work is using. And I think it looks cool. And uh, the old font was uh, looking dated for a while. And this one looks a lot nicer than before. So uh, if you want to, uh, like, uh, I didn't go into more details, like uh, how to space your titles, how to space your headings, spacing, subtitles, or things like that, because that would take a whole lot of time, and that would be a workshop. But you can ch check, check out this book, Refactoring UI, by Adam Watson. It's a quite a nice book, and it, it really gives you the, uh, all the means to design a nicer web from a typography point of view. So. Uh, I don't want to recommend any fonts for you to use, because that would be my preference, not yours. But uh, you can keep experimenting and keep evolving. And uh, there is uh, one single thing I want to mention, that uh, as, we, as times grow, as we grow and uh, the cultural shifts happen, one font doesn't always stay static or stay modern, because it depends on the culture. Same font, because the WordPress work website was recently revamped, but we have been using and seeing that website for like 10 years. And it started to look dated, because the rest of the web got a huge upgrade with nicer, bigger, narrower fonts, and everybody used to like that. So everybody started using like that. So uh, you can start uh, experimenting and keep evolving to, uh, to spice up your fonts. And uh, hopefully it works out. And maybe the book will help you. So many of the things that I have uh, mentioned in, uh, shared by this resource, Why Font Matters by Sarah Hinman is a great resource to book. So many examples, like the tomato soup story, like the great story, and other things. These the research links will be there in the book. And there are some other YouTube videos I got help with. Vox Media, Linus Bowman, 
Phil Edwards. So thanks to them for helping me with this presentation. And this, uh, for this presentation, I have used the Wayrill font in this presentation. So uh, thank you for all listening to me. I hope I haven't bored you guys. <laughs>